Hello, Christ United Methodist Church, friends and family. It's Pastor Jeremiah coming to you with this week's Upper Room devotional. And the one we take care of today is titled, The News is Good. <laughs> and our author today, uh, Graham West from Wisconsin, talks about his own experiences around the holidays and, and how fatigued and how difficult it is to keep your energy up. You know, we look to the holidays and we get so distracted by so many things. Dinner and plans and Christmas shopping and presents and family visiting and travel and all these things that at some level, this time where we're remembering the amazing good news of God's coming into the world in the person of Christ kind of gets lost. It becomes an energy depleting experience where by the end of Christmas, we're just exhausted and ready for some time off from the holidays. The shopping and all these things that take up our energy and our time, they can just kind of feel cumbersome. And at some point you might even ask yourself, man, I think I've just lost focus or, or uh, sight of what the real meaning of this whole thing is. And, and we're attention during the holidays. At our best, we're, we're thinking about this coming Messiah, we're thinking about you know Christmas and and what that means of God coming on and coming to earth, condescending and taking on flesh, incarnation, um, and becoming God with us, Emmanuel. All these fancy words to tell us that God wants to dwell with us, be with us in the flesh, to eliminate that distance between the spiritual heavenly world and the this material earthly realm that God breaks into it that's the whole point of this christmas season and a lot of what we talk about and sometimes it just whole thing just gets messy and graham kind of points out and remembers a, a recipe card that their family really loves and it's smudged and dirty over the years and but every time he pulls it out he feels connected connected to the family and the history and the tradition that brought us here. And it made me start thinking about our own traditions here at Christ. And, you know, we did a fundraiser dinner for the chicken barbecue a number of years back, and we came across this book. I didn't even know it was here. It's this big book of everything, all these recipes that, uh, you know, like this is Spanish green beans planned for 700 people. Um, the recipe is huge and it's, it's, it's deeply ingrained and entrenched with some some memories for so many people, both in the church and in the community that surrounds the church, that when we did our chicken barbecue, people kept asking, are you gonna do the green beans? We're like, well, yeah, we're gonna do green beans, of course. Now, myself and Tracy, who had never participated in that green bean uh, fundraiser with the, that chicken barbecue, thought, well, we'd serve green beans. And you no, know, there was an expectation that the green beans would be these green beans. And so we worked really hard, found the recipe and ended up making those green beans last minute, like adjusting our, our whole plan to make sure we didn't let people down because those green beans were important to so many people. It's a lot like our traditions and our, our holiday rituals. It's so important that, you know, we have Christmas Eve service and that we can come as a family. And, you know, even my family does some things, you know, traditionally on Christmas Eve and then into Christmas day and we have specific foods we like to eat and these things that just kind of help us but they can put us in that same tension place that graham was talking about in his devotional this tension place of exhaustion and fatigue and trying to make sure that everything's just so but also we want everything just so so we can connect to that feeling of connectedness and unity with those that have come before and with with the lord at christmas as we remember and celebrate this, the birth of Messiah, Jesus with us, Jesus in the flesh that saves our people, breaks into this hurting and broken and dark world and brings light, reminding us that God's love is with us, dwells with us and will always be with us, taking and making all things new. It's an incredible message that I hope during this holiday season you find a way to increase your focus on those spiritual things. Not get so lost and tied up in all the difficult things that are hard to, to, to wear through and to wait through. Um, and to make sure you take some time to enjoy the season. To find some rest 
in what God is doing and never forget the whole reason for the season. Um, as many times as we say that, we can still become distracted and become maybe smudged and, and dirtied and, and fatigued just like a recipe card that's been used over the years. And so our thought for today is the season's news is good. Christ is born to us. And yet also the scripture Graham brings us is from Matthew 11. Come to me all that are weary and carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Truly the holiday seasons can become difficult for us for a plethora of reasons, including, you know, emotional fatigue, but also sadness that those who have gone before aren't with us. And, and there's a, a heaviness to the holidays that goes along with the joy and the light and the happiness. And, and it's that tension and balance between these things where we find ourselves each and every year. And so I want you to remember the fatigue and the toll of the holidays and to rest in the Lord and to continue to seek God's face during this time to pray, to take time apart for yourself, to recognize the poles on your time and your energy and find balance in the midst of that struggle because the news is good. If you find yourself tired and fatigued, remember it's good news and take some time to rest. Let's look what our devotional says. Every Christmas, my wife brings out a tattered recipe for Christmas pudding that she has made for almost four decades. She inherited the recipe which my mother made for her family each Christmas. The much loved recipe is faded, smudged and stained, yet it brings joy to our family every year. By the time I reach the Christmas season at the end of the year, my heart is also tattered. Whatever joy I held at the beginning of the year has faded. The clarity of my vision is smudged. I am stained by letdown setbacks and defeats. That's when I know it's time to bring out the well-loved story of the angel announcing Jesus' birth in Luke chapter 2. The angel announcing the birth of Christ our Savior brings joy to our expectant hearts. After a year of hard challenge, stress, and struggle, this is truly good news of great joy. God has never forgotten us and comes to renew us each year at Christmas time. The fatigue of the holidays can wear us out, but also the year that we brought with us to get here. And boy, times have been tough across this last year and you know at some levels it feels like the last three years have just kind of run into one and we're still going through our own struggles as a country as a nation as communities in our hospitals and in our settings as much as things are changing and getting back to quote unquote normal we're still recovering and so let this christmas time as graham reminds us be a time of new beginnings, a time of restoration and renewal for us and with God and with each other. Find some peace in the season. Remember at Advent the themes of joy and peace and hope and love and expecting and waiting and longing. These are words that drive us during this season. And so expect and long for change in your life, renewal and happiness and joy to break in and peace to be the focus of humanity all rooted in God's love for us, which calls us to love God and love each other as God has loved us. This is all a place to begin again, to end the year with kind of a final statement of what's it all been for. And at our heart of those of us who call and profess Christ King, which we did not that long ago on Christ the King Sunday, and we do each and every day, for those of us who know Christ and, and long for him to reign and rule in our hearts and in our world, let it be a time of joy and celebration that there's something better coming and already here, something better available to you and to me and to all those that we love. Let Christmas be a time of new beginnings rooted in God's love for us and humanity for a new start, a fresh start. So if you feel tired, fatigued, if you feel drained, look forward to this time and say, how is God doing something new again? Imagine it like a present God is gifting us under the tree. What is God doing for the year to come? How is God using you and using me and using your church and using this church and, and using your community to realize the hopes that we all have for our community and for ourselves and for our families. And how are you a part of that? The news is good. So be a part of telling others what good news God has done. 
All right, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and look at our prayer focus, which is those yearning for good news. You always want to get good news on the other end of the phone. And the good news is that Christ has come. Christ will come again. Christ is here in and through each of us. Let's go ahead and pray. Gracious God, after a hard year, help us remember the good news of Christ our Savior. May we discover him in the fullness of your joy. May we see him in places unexpected and unexpected. May we see him in the face of those that we know and love and in the face of those we call stranger. May we see him in the faces of those we least like. May our eyes be open to the newness that is coming in your kingdom way that is coming to reign on earth as it is in heaven. Help us to be those so committed to realizing the changes you long for in our own personal lives and in our communities and beyond that we can't help but be full of hope and peace and joy and love during this season. And for those that are struggling, those that are feeling the heavy weight of the holidays, missing and longing for those that have gone before, give them joy and peace in ways that surpass understanding. Help them to have strength and courage for one more day, one more moment, one more year to come, focused on your reign, your rule, your love, your light, which can get us through it all. Help us to be a people full of hope and expectation that what you're doing will cause all things to become new once again. In your name we pray, amen. Have a great week. We'll see you again next week as we move closer and closer to Christmas. Have a great day.